I, I think I came down to like one again, Bo's a fan. We're all a fan. We're all nerds. Uh, and I think there was something that like Sony was like, oh, oh MJ and Peter. Okay. Like, you know, it, you know what I mean? Like it just, it worked out. And, and, and I'm pretty sure I'm like 99.9% sure it's real MJ. Congratulations on season two ending. Cause that, I mean, season one ending. Cause now all of our mentions at comic book are just, when is season two coming? I need more. I, everybody just wants more. And I'm like, yeah, I, I, I don't I, make the show. But it, it, you know, I equate it to like, we're baking a cake right now. Nobody wants to run a cake. Y'all don't want to run a cake. Let us bake it. You know, but uh, yeah, the cake is well underway and being baked and fabricated as we'd speak. Uh, there, there is no no rest for the wicked, I guess. You know, to to for, to use that phrase, we rolled right into season two while we were on season one. It's true. It's true. Uh, I'd like to also commend you for being a rare opportunity where someone did not lie to me from this company. Um, you said that Gambit was gone. Gambit is really gone. Yeah, the, the, the I, was trying, I was trying to be tact, tactful about how Magneto, but I buried it under the gambit. So I technically didn't lie to you. I just didn't mention Magneto. I mean, that's I, true. I probably lied to you. I'm sorry, man. It's okay. It's okay. Listen, and you did not lie to me about Magneto. I I guess we just did not address it, which is a half truth at best. What? Whose decision was it to have the final episode be this sort of Magneto sideways uh, cut story? Oh, uh, for, we're talking about season finale, right? 10? Yeah, season finale. Third, yeah, the third that, part. That's, of that's been in in the vision and mission statement uh, of, from Bo, you know, Bo to Mail from day one. Mm. Uh, you know, telling that side of Magnus and and leaning into you know the the Holocaust trauma that that mm -hmm. is the very foundation of why Eric is the way he is, why he, his ideology is shaped, you know, the way it is, um, and so you know, being able to lean into that and, and not shy away from those themes even even more so not not in a gratuitous nature right but but Bo in the writer's room having the blessing and the mandate from marvel to go no 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 if you're going to do that lean into that go do that stuff like you know because that's what was so great about the og show right it, it was even though it was in the bubble of a saturday morning cartoon right saturday morning serial it never shied away from the themes that that it was talking about uh, Beauty and the Beast is one of my favorite ones. You know, it's like this dude was mad that this 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 adorable blue this blue you know thing who's the most world renowned scientist, one of the most world renowned scientists ever. Super smart. I'm gonna give her blind out her sight, and he's like, F "You, like, what?" Like, as a kid, <laughs> like, no. I, grew up, I, I did that made me so angry as a kid. Like it hurt me, and I didn't understand. I was being taught about prejudice right there. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I had no idea, but I was receiving it. And that's the best part about what the OG series did. It, it didn't shy away from what the themes and the allegories of what X-Men is prejudice. Uh, they just, you know, they had to adhere to that Saturday morning bubble. We get to expand a little bit out of that. And, and to that point, you know, as you see in the show, just because we can, doesn't mean we will or should. Uh, right. it's, it's all about, you know, we on a team, it's something that we, we realize we give ourselves false parameters to make sure we're checking our math, you know, whether it's nerd math, geographical math, whatever it is, you know, we have, we, we realize we gave ourselves false parameters to make sure to keep us in check, to make sure we're not going too far away from the, the original DNA that is, you know, the OG show, but also adapting it, you know, fresh, but familiar for, for ours. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it keeps so much of the DNA of the original. Mm -hmm. uh, we had BD talk to Ross Marquand about how, you know, the episode where, uh, of Ross, he's saber tooth and and wolverine and like the sort of like that's what made him want to be a voice actor so it's imparting yeah. that to people and i think with the new fans they are also feeling that and one of the ways this thing has maintained the dna of the original show is holy guacamole extinction tolerance association part three has all of the marvel you can shove into a little bit over 30 minutes how yeah. in the world just Every five seconds, I was like, my God, my goodness, what, how, how do they keep doing it? 
Well, I mean, like one look, we had we had we had good scripts to work off of, uh, you know, cameos and the universe universe expansion. That again, that's ingrained in the DNA of the original show. Yeah, Except when Larry Houston did it, all of those cameos were were illegal. So, <laughs> right, and so uh, <laughs> thanks, Larry, for all the all of the contingencies we have in place. So for, we can't do that th- these days. Right. I love telling that about this story. And I love reminding Larry, like, thank you, Larry. He just laughs. It's funny. Uh, but I'm also like, man, you did some cool guerrilla guerrilla warfare stuff with that the storyboards, man. And thank you. Like, thank and, you. And, and you know, it was cool because you know, Larry just shared this recently. One little tidbit, Larry designed the external in the in the OG show. Really? Um, yeah. Huh. Uh, I just found out about this like last week. <laughs> we're on, the way on, on stuff for season two and we had a good meeting with larry he's like oh yeah i designed the external you're just gonna drop that in casual no come back come back we're not talking about the next thing we're talking about how so you know uh uh yeah and apparently so uh, just a little side sidetrack external wasn't created yet he needed something that week marvel publishing was like oh we don't have a design we can get you something in a month Time stands still for no one, especially in TV animation. TV, yeah. I needed it last week. I'll just do something myself, you know. And 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 so that's why we have the external design that we do. Um, yeah, man, like I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm giddy. Like, yes, I am a professional, and yes, I love working as an artist and as a, as a collaborator alongside Larry Houston. I mean, what the hell is my life? That's awesome. But also, you are you know damn well I'm going to be asking these animation tips. Like, hey man, what did you go through when you're like? Give me some tea. Creative, create creative tea. Who created this? Whose choice was this? You know, uh, on a daily basis, and I haven't gotten an answer yet because he can't remember. But I'm trying to ask whose idea was it to voice Puck the way they did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Larry. Whose idea was Puck's voice? Did you I figure it Puck. out? But no, he, he's like I. I think it's you know it's always I think it's so and so. Let me find out. And then I ask him. He's like, oh, it wasn't them. I'm so so. I don't know if I'll ever know, but I'm like, why, Pug? He's already. T- <laughs> Anyways, I, I love it. But yeah, just getting to work alongside, you know, Larry and, and just getting con- to consult and just be in tandem with, you know, Eric and Julia, just it's it's cool, man. And then on top of that, you know, to have look to have the audience, you know, love and respect and, and appreciation for for what, you know, our, our team is doing. That's cool. But it's another thing to have the OG creators, you know, not only give their blessing, but love the show in return. And my favorite thing Eric loves to tell me every time he sees me is, this came out so great. It could have gone so badly. (laughs) So badly. You know, when things reboot, they can go horrible. I was like, yeah, yeah, Eric, he goes, this didn't do that. (laughs) <laughs> this could have gone so horrible and it, i love that about her because i'm like damn he's right let me let me stay humble we could have really screwed this up but we did it and and i have confidence in that because everybody on the show like we're talking we're all fans we we are we are not making stuff for the zeitgeist and all oh, we hope they like it we're making stuff and the stories that we want to see that satiate us as storytellers and fans, because if we're not convinced, the the world, the audience, you guys aren't going to be convinced, right? So, yeah. and 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 that's just that's just been the. I love to word use use the word humbling when it when it comes to the reception of the show, but I also love to use the words it's earned and deserved. Yeah, uh, uh, you know this show is meticulously done from script all the way to what we, we get on screen. Nothing is happening by accident, and if it does, we lean into that harder so the audience never has to question oh did they mean to do that oh my god okay so if, if, if it's everything's on purpose i i have two things before sure. we get out of here which is what's the conversation like to unite mj and peter uh, just like out of nowhere like everybody on our show paused the episode at 12 15 or 12 20 at yeah. night like what is happening and also if that's the case what's the conversation to chaka yeah like I'm like, wait a second. And the other thing, he was to talk. Uh, so, well, so if you could so talk about those two things. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I will elaborate on as much of it as I can. Okay. Some some of those, the the Black Panther of it all are definitely closed doors conversations that I wasn't privy to. That was definitely in Bo and, and the executives realm. Mm-hmm. Um, but for us, 
you know, there's, there's always, there's, there's multiple timelines, right? There, there's always, absolutely. Uh, there's always a one-off. It's, this is exactly how I like it, except for that one thing. Okay, cool. But it's still the thing. So who's to say what timeline is the right timeline, proper timeline. I mean, y'all mm-hmm. aren't even ready for what, how we're going to you up in season two. Oh uh, no. <laughs> we, tease it at the end of, we, we tease it at the end of 10. It's like, we're going to have to elaborate on that. Yeah. It's like, can't just leave that there. Uh, yeah. So, and, and, and for, at least for myself and what we kind of, this is set in the nineties. If, if T'Challa is the natural successor and is more of our era now, he would have still been a kid at that time. And while it is sort of retconny based on what, 90s episode series you watch right whether it was fantastic four or, uh i believe it was was fantastic four that even yeah. had, uh to had t'challa yeah it's true um and that was before like that was uh, and this seemed nerd uh <laughs> if t'chaka was like assassinated or if like there was a back in time thing but i remember they did t'challa but that's the best thing about our sandbox and and multiple universes and things for us it just felt right like you know what? I don't know what the mandates and I can't speak to whatever the closed door conversations were, but as a storyteller, I'm like, Oh, this is, this is not the odds. This is mid to late nineties. Like, you know, I like the idea that we're, we're seeing the legacy characters, you know, just from, for myself as a creative, it's reminding the audiences, Oh, this is an earlier time. It's just one of those other things that we could just help remind the audiences. We're not now we are then why did they do this? Cause we didn't know about that then, or we couldn't do that then. And, and so it's the constant, you know, just to kind of check that, that timeline math, if that makes sense. Absolutely. To, to visually remind the audience, we are in the nineties. Mm, right. We were before, not, not current. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I, yeah, whatever. There, there was another one, right. I was able to. Uh, the the MJ is Peter thing, but. Oh, I, yeah. yeah. Uh, honestly, man, I think that was just. I, I think that came down to like one again, Bo's a fan. We're all a fan. We're all nerds. Uh, and I think there was something that like Sony was like, oh, oh, MJ and Peter. Okay. Like, you know, it, you know what I mean? Like it just, it worked out. And, and, and I'm pretty sure I'm like 99.9% sure it's real MJ. You know, uh, um, I don't, I don't remember <laughs> this off the top of my hand, but I'm, I'm, I remember talking to Bo and it was like, well, if we're going to do it, we're, we're going to do it. Let's, Give the bone. And so it's not a clone. I'm pretty sure it's MJ. Like I'm 99.9% sure. 99.9% sure. sure. It is the 90s. You you never know. Well, thank you so much, Jake. We cannot wait for season two. Congratulations on season one. So winning. And you are welcome around these phase zero parts anytime. You're almost the record holder for most appearances on our show. So you get get, get you a plaque. I, I'm done. I'm happy to talk talk with you anytime. I, I always enjoy it, uh, and, and I and I love and, and see the passion for, for for not just our show but the IP in general. So thank you.